Good afternoon. Welcome to Cafe Coa. My name is Connie DeLego. I'm the director at the Council on Aging in Plymouth, and I am very, very happy to have as my guest, my mentor as well, oh. is Joanne Moore. She is the director of the Council on Aging in Plymouth. Good afternoon, Joanne. Thanks so much for having me on your show today. Well, I'm thrilled that you were able to come in. You were yeah. able to come in. We have a lot to talk about, actually. We have some very, very exciting programs going on at both of our Councils on Aging, both simultaneously, and yep. I'm doing some of mine as a result of some of the good work that, that Joanne has done. Um, I think what I'd like to talk about first would be the um, Aging Mastery Program. Great. Which is a program that was created by the National Council on Aging, yep. of which we are now members, and we'll talk about that later on as well, and um, Mass Council on Aging. Joanne, would you give us a little in-depth? You know more about it than I sure. do, so I'd rather have you explain it more sure. clearly. Thank In, you. In um, 2012, there were five senior centers selected to be part of this pilot project called the Aging Mastery. And and um, Duxbury is one of those sites. And during that pilot project, we met with people at NCOA, which is the National Council on Aging, to develop the framework of this program. There's many things that will help you live a healthy life. And so there was an eight-week curriculum, and then we had eight weeks of optional learning. What we learned from that was 16 weeks was a little bit too long. Mm -hmm. People were really engaged in the learning um, and really wanted more education after. And then people signed up for our, many of our evidence-based programs. Um, in 2013, a panel of us spoke at the MCOA conference, and I think that was out in Sturbridge. And um, people said, God, we'd love to have this in our town but we can't do it so what's the why did you come and talk about it because yeah. it got us excited about it so MCOA said we need to expand this throughout the state and they went to the executive office of elder affairs and got funding um, and so we're really thankful for the funding from both MCOA and the hmm. executive office of elder affairs in 2014 10 sites joined oh, the wow. aging mastery program from all over the state and that was big senior centers little senior centers in the cities and rural and it's really nice because this is a program that can be implemented at any senior center throughout the state. Um, and the format changed a little bit. We realized 16 weeks was too long, mm -hmm. so it became 12 weeks. Some of the curriculum changed a little bit. And so this program's evolving and changing. And even as you, um, it's being rolled out again this year, it's being evolved and changed a little more. We're really excited by the end of this year. In Massachusetts, there'll be over, I think it's 46 sites My participating. Goodness, that is wonderful, isn't it? Yes. And this is nationwide? So there's 50 sites across the country and then an additional 46 in Massachusetts. So really, we are a leader in the state, and it's really because of MCOA and their advocacy, mm -hmm. and they're a really strong association for They really are strong. We're blessed to have the MCOA. They go to bat for us all the time. By the way, Joanne happens to be president of the MCOA right mm -hmm. now, sitting mm -hmm. president. The, I'm going to go back a little bit. Um, you're talking about 12-week programs. Yes. Now, is this 12 weeks? I can go this week, and I can go, maybe I don't want to go next week. I'll go to the other one. Um, there are different topics. Do I just pick the topics? I want to go to and then attend those? Nope. So what happens is, um, and we're really lucky on the South Shore, Plymouth, Kingston, Marshfield, and Duxbury are all going to be rolling out the Aging Mastery Program this week. So if someone couldn't fit it in their schedule to go to Duxbury because we're doing a Wednesday morning, they would be able to go to another site. So you will have the same topics at all three? Yes. But maybe different speakers? Yes. How are the speakers chosen? Is this somebody from the staff? Um, sometimes staff, but really we've gone out to get professionals and experts in the field on the 12 topic areas. I mean, we've been so fortunate, and I know you've been working with Beth Israel deaconess mm -hmm. as well. Um, the hospital has been really generous to us with their speakers and having ex experts from the mm. hospital. Well, let's give me, if you would, an idea on, I. there's a whole, the 12. Sure. No, the, there's 10 topics. And then there's two free weeks, so to speak. So um, as you're working with your group, say week five or six, you can do a little survey of what topics people would like to learn more about. <coughs> and then in that last two weeks, you can implement um, guest speakers on those topic areas. One thing we were ex um, surprised to find out was people wanted to learn more about hydration. Mm -hmm. So as you'll see, this, this time, instead of it just being nutrition, it's nutrition and hydration. So really this program changes, grows, and, and um, evolves based on what the participants want because really the goal is for all of us to age 
in a healthy manner. Right, and hydration really is important. Right. That is something that I hadn't realized until, well, living on the reservation, I learned that really quick because right. it's the, hot, the sun is so hot. And doing elder hostel, we were taking people out and they would just, oh, I had water this morning. No, 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 no. Right. And now, I mean, I, we'll just pick a couple of topics. Sure. This happens to be one of them. With the hydration, what do they suggest people? Is it still like three glasses, of, eight ounce glasses of water a day or? Um, yeah, they, uh, they said at minimum you at should minimum. have at, eight ounces, but that's the minimum. But really, I think the, um, they're saying half your body weight at least. Hmm. Um, but really, that's where the expert comes in. So the material, so the format of the, the class is um, people pre-enroll, and then we have what we call a session zero, and I know yours is gonna be on March 19th. Um, and people will pre-register with you that they're interested in learning more for about the program. And we'll do an overview of the program so people really understand what they're getting involved mm -hmm. in. And it's a 12-week commitment, and at first I think people say you know that's a long time but people are so engaged in the learning that the 12 weeks goes fast make great new friends learn more about the senior center and get more connected mm. with the community at large which is really a win-win all the way that's around. What, that's the, the goal part yeah. of the goal anyway for us doing it I know I was hesitant to do this as mm -hmm. you know because we um, when the required 30 to 40 people, and I'm thinking, I, I don't think I can get 40 people, 20, 30 people to make a commitment to 12 weeks. Right. But you encouraged us, and we did look into it, and we have not put it out, right. so to speak, except in the newsletter. It's on the back page of the newsletter, and we already have 39 um, people signed up. There might be 40 by now. The phone was ringing in Jennifer's office when I left, but right. um, I think we'll take 45 just to have right. you know, a wait list. And you can take list. a wait list because if wait you list, re-offer right. it again the following year, that might but be a possibility. The thrill of it is is how excited people are and about this. And I think because this. it's a national program, mm. and we're really in Massachusetts, like I said, we are the leader. So you are a leader in your city, town, um, making this happen for the seniors. Yeah. And to have the research behind it that's taking place at NCOA. All the evaluations are done by Columbia University. So it's mm. a real high caliber program. And like I said, the speakers are really experts in their field. Is there any kind of, um, is this part of a research project at all? Will it be? So um, participants are asked to complete a pre-evaluation and a post-evaluation, and they'll be tracking something called points. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and I think this is kind of the most confusing, but gets to be really fun as it goes on. So there's things called called daily activity points, and you can get those in four different areas. So if you're eating right, uh, getting good rest, exercising, and taking your medicine correctly. So what could be eating, my goal for eating right could be completely different for your goal, and everyone creates their own goal. Mm -hmm. Mine might be to add an apple a day. Yours might be to add that you know, fourth glass of water. Or not to and have that ice cream at night. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Ours is chocolate at yeah. the front desk. Um, but so it's you um, give yourself points, so it's on the honor system. So mm -hmm. you know if, you're, if you ate healthy today or if you didn't, or if you um, turned the TV off or didn't bring your technology to bed and so you got a better night's sleep. Mm -hmm. um, and the nice thing is we have these, like I said, the speakers in these key areas. Um, med management, um, we have uh, Kristen McGill from the hospital. She's done our program. She's a pharmacist there. And um, she said only 20% of the people actually take their medicines according to the way the doctor prescribes wow, them. Wow, 20%. And I was surprised that number yeah. was so low, but she gave really helpful tips. Um, you know, like I said, there is a framework that each um, guest speaker follows, but then there's plenty of time to have your questions answered or um, just specific things that really are personal to you. And a lot of that time is how we found what other um, speakers we should have based mm -hmm. on the questions from our audience. And so the points that you talk about, um, eating healthy and taking your medicine correctly and stuff, are these points accrued or based on the topics of that week? Yes, and then so uh, week one, say you had exercise as your your person. Um, you, if you exercised every day, whatever your exercise plan, you'd earn a point a day. And then you would continue earning points throughout the 12 weeks of the program. Mm. And then the next week you would do um, exercise and nutrition. 
mm -hmm. and then the third week. It's a building block. Yeah. Every week you add things. Now say your um, program on advanced planning was in week seven. Part of that is to have that conversation you haven't had with your family mm -hmm. about your wishes. Um, you're given a book called The Five Wishes and it's a guide to go through. So one that you make sure you have all the documents you need to have signed but also to have that conversation so that your family really knows what you hmm. want and it's and you can broach it as a, I'm, I'm in this program and I'm learning all these great things and I want to share it with that you. That would be a good um, icebreaker more or less for people to open that conversation. Right. And I, I'm glad you brought that one up too because that was one of the things when in looking over the topics that they had that I found to be not the most valuable but um, so very, very important because, as you said, people don't want to have that. Right. Well, I'm not, what is it? I'm not going to die? I know. We're all going to die. <laughs> you know? Right. And, and how many times, and you know this yourself, in our position, people come in and um, somebody passes away and what do I do? Right. You know, and right. they, I don't know what they wanted, or I'm going to do this, and the sister said, oh, no, 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 she would have never wanted that. She wanted this. You have to put it down. Exactly. You have to have your proxy. You have to have your DNR. You have to, whatever it is you need to have. Right. And it's not too soon to do it. Right. And I thought what was really interesting, so my children are now over 18. Mm -hmm. They oh. need to have documentation. And so as um, organizers of the program, we learn so much mm -hmm. too. We all walk away with the aha yeah. moment. And I know we've had nurses in the program and they've said, you know, I don't think I'm going to learn anything new on nutrition. And they walked away and they say, yeah, yeah, I learned a new tidbit or, you know, there's so much information out there. What really is the mm -hmm. right information? So tell me a little bit about the structure of it. Now, um, it's a 12 week program. Yeah. We had the kick, we will have the kickoff and right. ours is going to be March 19th. Right. And, um, then we begin the classes, those would be all lined up. So how do they work? Do people just come in and sit down and they have an hour and a half lecture or how nope. does it go? No, nope, no. Nope. <laughs> so usually, um, depending on the time of day, I think yours is going to be around that seemed time. to be what most people. So are. say 12, is yours 12 or 12.30? I believe we'll be coming in at 12, so, yes, so 12. 12 to 12.30, you'll have um, a gathering time and, a, and you'll serve a lunch or a, a light meal. And people, it's a great socialization mm. time. And if someone has specific questions, that's a great time for the staff to answer it. Half hour into the program, um, the leader or the coordinator will introduce the speaker. If there's any special information that needs to get out, that will happen at that time. Mm -hmm. The guest speaker will give an hour presentation. There is going to be some extra materials that you can access online, or there will be printed materials that you mm -hmm. can take home for additional reading, and then a, a question and answer period at the end. And one of the one of the program manager actually brought up to me that she was concerned because there was so much reference to YouTube or online websites and everything and I think pretty much most of the people that have signed up for this I think Jennifer is asking them as they call if they're computer savvy but we also have computer room right so if there's anything they have to look up we can certainly help them with them but I think that that's Right. I think that's not going to be a, no. as huge an issue. And you know what? Uh, even some of the materials that if someone really wanted it and couldn't access, like I'd say, you know, oh, we yeah, can we download it, it and Absolutely. we'll make a copy for you. Yeah. Or we can load up the YouTube for you and you can watch it at the yeah. center. So there's many ways to skin the cat if someone wasn't comfortable right, right. with t technology. I don't think they should stay away from the I program. wouldn't say so, not yeah. at all. And I think just that when you think about 30 seniors of all age and seniors are all ages because right. as you know they're anywhere from 45 or 50 up to ever yeah i think i our oldest this time may be 80 89. oh good yeah in this yeah. round i haven't i haven't gotten that far yet to find out how old our eldest are but i mean we've got yeah. 80 something year old people that take zumba so right well and you, it, everyone learns from everyone i think age is just what it, yeah, it, it, and you're right. And one of the things, that, another thing that is in here that I think is very important, and even for some of the elder elders, is the the whole thing about how to approach your your doctor, your yes. medical, when you go in there. You know, a lot of it's it's a matter of respect that they've had all these years mm -hmm. that the doctor knows best, mm -hmm. and so they don't have a tendency to ask as many questions as they should, or they just sit there and listen and nod their head and unfortunately walk out and I don't know what he, what he said, you know. Right, right. So I think... And part of that's preparing for yeah. the visit. And you have a right to ask questions. Right. You know, if something troubles you, you this is when you should bring it up. Right. You know, not go home and still have that headache or the toe hurts or whatever it right. is. This is the time to bring it up and... 
And, and actually, when we've had a, one of our guest speakers said, when the doctor comes in the office, the first thing you should say is, I've, I've written a list of questions, and before you leave today, could we, I need to have you answer them. That's wonderful. So that's advanced planning for it the is. appointment so that you're ready and they know what to expect and they've allocated time in the visit exactly. so that they can get I was just going to say that because then answered. they know right from the start. Right. Okay, there's questions to answer, so I'm not going to just dash out of the room. Exactly. Yeah, that's great. So um, there are a few new topics this time that I, I okay, thought I might mention. Okay, tell me what they are. So let me, let me pull my sheet All right. Up. So one of them um, that is new this time is healthy relationships and really the oh, importance good. of connecting with other people and, and being engaged. And coming to the Senior Center is a great way to mm -hmm. build healthy relationships and get to know new people, especially, you know what, it's hard for anyone to go somewhere by themselves right. the first time. And this is a great way to meet 35 This new is friends. awesome. I'm going to say that. You a yeah. room full of people all of like minds because yeah. they're all there for that same reason you you're bound to get some new friendships exactly Which and, is, and take the onus off of the council on aging right you right. know it's really exciting it's great i'm thrilled and then one called um civic engagement and that's mm. really the importance of volunteering and getting involved in your community right. and, and being an advocate and maybe it's being an advocate for elder issues or an issue that's near and dear to your heart so yeah. that's those are some of the new ones that are are happening and financial fitness mm. um, it was interesting we did a pilot project in November and it was a three session program and I really wasn't sure how it was gonna go we had 25 people and they covered a wide range of topics and Bill Harris um, was our guest speaker and he covered he was patient and if someone had a specific question he answered mm. it and came back with more information about things that people wanted to know and to, to age healthy you have to you know be financially fit and um, you know creating a budget and I'm some things ask you to name some, kind of what what type of things yeah. because not everybody can invest and right right not, and so not I, think it, I think it really looks at um, things that you can do personally to live healthier and maybe little changes that you can make in your own personal life and maybe maybe it's even reaching out to the social workers at the senior centers and going you know what I'm eligible for food mm. stamps or fuel assistance or you know I need a home modification loan and the nice thing with the benefit it's checkup, which is another mm. MCOA program. Um, you can get access to all the programs that you're eligible for just by meeting with an outreach mm. worker. And that's something too that a lot of people don't know about, and, and it's not that new, but it is relatively new. Yeah, within <clears> the last year. Yep, yeah, that people can go right online and put in their information. It's a very secure website, right. and they can find out if they're eligible for food stamps or fuel assistance or housing or any of those things. So maybe what we can do is get the website, and they can put it at the bottom of the screen. So yeah. Because it's MCOA benefits checkup, but I'm not sure the correct order, okay. so we can get I that I can get you. that. And the other one, too, is the, the new um, Social Security website. Right. That you can, yourself, go online and find out all your Social Security information, your history, and, and um, what your, you can expect in retirement and so on and how many years you've got it's right. got all your information on that and that helps did you have the plan. people come out to your to your house your, your house <laughs> it's it like, home, like my right? house yeah <laughs> <laughs> it is home to come out to um, um we've done the benefits checkup one so far we haven't yeah. done the other one yet i just had the people in from social security yeah. to put they put the link on the on the desktop so that it's just a little easier to access that's right. all yeah but, one less click everything makes it a little bit yeah. easier no but it's good yeah yeah, so there's so many things out there that people just don't know about. And, you know, like I said, it's the onus of the Council on Aging, but you have to get over that because right. we are all aging. Right. We may not like to admit that, but we are all aging. Right. And why not do it healthy? Why not do it fit? Why not get these hints? Why not have company? Why not be educated? Right. And I think what's really exciting is NCOA would really like to form aging mastery clubs. Mm -hmm. So oh, at talk the about end that. of That's the 12 wonderful. weeks, like I said, people are really looking for more learning. Mm -hmm. So what they'd like to do is continue the learning. So each site um, could form a club, but say we were offering a program in Duxbury that one of your regular people mm -hmm. were interested in, they could come on up and, and partake in our program. So we could somehow create a calendar yeah. of what was happening at all the aging mastery sites. Or if someone was going to the Cape and there was an aging mastery site and they could look online and say, gosh, I'd love to see that lecture on A, B, or C, mm -hmm. which would be really wonderful. It really would be wonderful. And that would help to spread the whole venue of 
councils on aging, right. which you know. Right. Um, and you said to get some sort of a little pin. Sure. At the end of the 12 weeks, there's a celebration because it is mm -hmm. a huge it's accomplishment. A graduation type yeah. of thing. Yeah. Uh -huh. You get this pin, and so if you're out in the community, we want you to wear it proudly, and you'll get to meet other people mm -hmm. as time goes on, and and it grows, especially in Massachusetts. Yeah. By the end of the year, I bet you there's close to 2,000 people who will have these Isn't that pins. wonderful? I mean, Isn't it's that, really yeah. exciting. And we have a lot of very, very good and very active um, councils across yes. the state, too. All of Everybody's doing a lot of work, a lot of groundbreaking activities and things. And right. so I think it would be fun. I know when I go back to Pittsfield, I've been into the to the council on aging there or Dalton or some of the you know where I grew up right and that's kind of fun to go back you might even run into somebody you knew from high school or whatever you never uh, right. know you know right. oh so you're in that too yeah right. well and I love it that um, six towns have joined together in the Berkshires and they're doing the aging mastery as oh, a group oh isn't that wonderful and I thought what a great collaborative effort to yeah. get this word out so it's exciting so it is because I wonder who it is because there's a lot of small towns yeah Williams town um, Brian Grady is kind of taking the lead out oh, there. Oh, okay, so, so Adams, Cheshire, North Adams. Right, I'm that's directionally challenged, so I wouldn't oh, okay. say the same as Adams. But I grew up I, out there, yeah. so I, that, yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah, it's really that's exciting. really good. So, this is a kind of a program I, I would love to encourage people to join. I wish that I could say it's still open. Um, I think at this point, and by the time this is aired, we will be full. Mm -hmm. but, but it doesn't mean there isn't another round coming exactly. along and people could get in. Yeah. I would love to have people, if, you'd like, if you're interested in this Aging Mastery program, I would encourage you to call the Council on Aging. And we can set up a list, mm -hmm. you know, just a, a wait list. If we have enough people, then possibly we could do it again in the fall or right. certainly next year. Right. I didn't sign up for the two this year because I wasn't that sure of it. Right. But I, you know, I'll, I'll admit it. But I mean, if there's extra funding out there, that would be something to talk to Mary Kate Brown. Yeah. You know, that to see if they'd be doing additional funding if it was so successful yeah. that you could have a second session in the it fall. It just might. I'd love to have that many people sign up that we would, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's, um, we're doing these programs. We're all doing them to get people in. We just finished one called the Legacy Program, which was great. It was um, some, a professor, a doctor, doctorate, at um, Bridgewater, mm -hmm. who had for herself done some ancestry back ancestry background and found um, uh, an uncle who was in Civil War, I think, and she had traced the roots back to that, and she managed to find a name and a contact in Virginia, and she corresponded with this cousin, right. you know, 17 times removed or whatever. Anyway, long story short, she went down to visit her and got all this history about this this great 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 uncle that she had oh. and was enthralled with it and she wondered it made her start thinking about all all the, all the rest of us and what kind of histories we have right so it's it is like ancestry.com a little bit except that what the program does we just finished one and, and I think we're going to start another one the program gets people to create a project in this six week period of time mm -hmm. um, for instance they might create a book you know, one gentleman had a really lovely book that he created with pictures that he found, and, you know, and charts and everything from, from the past. And someone else did a little video by interview, interviewing any of the older relatives that she could find. And she herself was, right. was quite elderly, but she herself learned an awful lot, you know, about the family. There's so many things. And we're going to start the Ancestry.com. We, we got the program. Mm -hmm. And I'm anxious to get going on that, too. That's going to start in a couple of weeks. So. Right. And so what, people be able to just go to your computer lab and get yep. and work yeah we have that too do you yeah, do yeah. they use it a lot mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. I would and we think have a couple people who are really dedicated to the yeah. whole search and will help it's people it's time consuming it is we we don't have anybody at our place yet that I we put out a feeler that that really was familiar with it but Sharon La Rosa is working on another project with us from the library and right. she suggested somebody who came in and this lady is going to volunteer wonderful to come in we're going to start with a grandparents group our grandparents raising grandchildren we happen to be one of our our uh, meetings we're sitting around the table and it turns out that two of the grandparents that are raising their grandkids were related wow they had never even met each other till that day and then they're talking about so and so down in in um, on the Cape or something. Wait a minute, I know that family, and they were related. Right. And it's just great. It's great. What a wonderful connection. I know it. So lots of stuff. Yes. Lots of stuff. It's changing and growing every day. Yeah, it is. You know, um, we did just get our national accreditation, as you have. Kudos to and you. That is your, a huge project. Thank you. Oh, 
God, yes, thank you. And I know you had yours. You're working on your second right. session. We're waiting for our on-site review. Are you ready? Oh, so already? March. You finished that already? Yep. So March will be wow, hopefully was... March April. No, it's a it's a year long. Oh, was it? Project. It seems like you just started that. Again. I mean, the second well, time. Well, time time flies. My gosh, it does, doesn't it? Oh, I know. Ah. I know, and it's, so it's accreditation is a five year. Hmm. You're accredited for five years, and I think there's over 200 in the country, but there's 15,000 senior centers. So really, it's the cream of the crop yeah, that really. What, I think that Patricia, that, that was one of my mentors through that, was like top 11 percent. Right of the country. Right, it's amazing. That's amazing. It's a lot of work. It is a lot of work, it. and for people to don't understand what that is if you work in a school or anything we've ever had to go through accreditation or a business you have to pull a lot of things together and for national accreditation they required um, nine standards yes and each standard had to have a committee to work on the current standards and add new standards mm -hmm. and, and fix review them up and have. review them make sure all your policies were in, intact right. and your communications with the town and their their laws and bylaws and oh it right. was well and, and i think it all starts by reviewing your mission vision and values and then exactly. creating a, a strategic plan yeah and we had a wonderful we had a kickoff meeting and we must have had over a hundred people there right and we had you know like a town manager was there and chief of police and dine in and, and it's great to have that support was, from the yeah. town yeah. And even have um, the community be on the committee. So yes, like volunteers, staff, um, other department heads. Yep. It really is a great way for people to get a better understanding of what happens of what we at do. a senior exactly. center. It, it opens a lot of eyes. Right. It opens a lot of eyes. Right. And then now my staff has each, uh, they're all each going for state accredited, state Certi certification, right? which is another, it's a little bit lengthy, but not too bad. Mm -hmm. But so they were encouraged by doing the national accreditation that they thought they'd go for certification. Right. You know, people say, well, why are you doing all that? Well, because it, it adds I think validity. Val yep, and value. And value, and, I, and it shows us what we're doing. Well, and I think you sometimes forget how much gets done in a single day because of how busy everybody right. is. And then when it, you have the time to reflect, and you, yeah. it's amazing how much happens and what a difference you make in so many lives. Absolutely. Um, and you I, know, and we're, I'm so proud of my staff, as I know you are, I, just the best people well, in the you world. You know what, people do this job because they love they it. They love it, right, or they're not in it, right. they don't last long. Right. So, and I know it's the same with you, and I know even with us, with our hearts, we're in the right place. Right. It's, it's funny how you end up. Where you're supposed yeah. to be. It is not necessarily where you start out, no. but it's where you end up. Right. And I, and I love that. Yeah. You know, and I thank you very, very much for coming in and, oh. and helping me just oh, I'm describe so happy this too, and, and some of the things we do. I'm so excited you're doing the Aging Mastery Program, and congratulations. The accreditation is a huge feat and something to be so proud of. Well, thank you. you. You and your staff and the town of Plymouth. Kudos. Well, we haven't made the big, we, we're going to make a big announcement in March and have a, have a little luncheon or something to celebrate it. But yeah, we're, we're very proud of that. So congratulations. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. And I would like to invite all of you to come on down to the Council on Aging anytime you can. We have a lot going on there, and you are more than welcome. See you next time. When I started taking care of mom, I didn't realize the challenge of playing so many roles. But above all, I'm still her daughter. Visit aarp.org caregiving. We're here to help.